Hi everyone, welcome back. I'm Jackie and I'm here to help you pass your US naturalization interview. You have waited for so long and the big day has finally come. I wanna make sure every one of you is fully prepared to pass the naturalization interview with flying colors. So today, I'm gonna to go over 10 things you should do for your naturalization interview. We also provide live mock interviews via Zoom. So if you need additional help, check out the link in the description. Are you ready? Let's get started. First thing, dress professionally. I suggest you to dress business casual. For men, it's usually long pants, a buttoned shirt or sweater, and closed-toed shoes. For women, long pants or a skirt, and a blouse, or a dress. Skip shorts, t-shirts, sandals, and anything too revealing. Treat it like a job interview, not a day at the beach or the club. It shows that you are serious about the application and respect the officer. In addition, some field offices can schedule the oath ceremony on the same day. So if you dress professionally, you can attend the oath ceremony on the same day and become a U.S. citizen right after the interview. And you'll definitely want to look nice for that and take a picture. Second, arrive early. Try to arrive at least 30 minutes before the appointment time to avoid any unforeseeable situations such as traffic or getting lost. During the pandemic, the officer usually won't allow you into the building until 15 minutes before your scheduled appointment. They might also require you to wear a mask. When you arrive, you will be asked to enter through a security checkpoint, kind of like in an airport. Inform the officer that you have a naturalization interview. The security officer or the immigration official will tell you where to find the customer service waiting area. When you arrive at the customer service waiting area, you will need to present your naturalization interview notice to the immigration officer at the customer service desk. The officer will then ask you to wait until your name is called. Third, bring your appointment notice and your proper IDs. You must bring your appointment notice with you to the interview along with your green cards, both expired and non-expired ones. If your appointment notice didn't arrive on time, you can always print a copy from your online account under the Documents tab. Some officers will ask you for your passports or a state-issued ID, such as a driver's license. They're not required, but if you have them, bring them with you. And if someone is accompanying you to the interview, that person also needs to provide a state-issued ID. Keep in mind that most offices only allow applicants to enter the building during the pandemic. Fourth, have good posture and manners during the interview. Relax, but sit up straight. Be confident, but not arrogant. Smile occasionally and make good eye contact with the interviewer. Number five, bring all supporting documents. The appointment notice will have a list of documents that you need to bring. This is a very generic list, and I suggest you to bring more documents than the notice asks for. Take a look at this video for additional documents that I recommend you bringing. Make sure to bring all original supporting documents since they already have copies of the documents. Why would the officer want to see the documents you've already submitted? There are various reasons. For example, the officer wants to confirm the validity of the documents. Or maybe the documents you've submitted are no longer up to date. And remember, if you don't have a supporting document that the officer asks for during the interview, there's a likely chance your application will not be approved and you'll receive an N-14 form after the interview. That will further delay your approval process. 
And if you fail to respond to the N14 form in a timely manner, your application will be denied. So, it's better to be overprepared and bring everything. And one more thing, if a document is in a foreign language, make sure to bring the original and a certified translated copy in English. Number six, review and be familiar with all of your answers on your N-400 application. A large part of the naturalization interview involves reviewing the N-400 form. The officer wants to confirm your application is accurate and up to date. Since it takes a while to schedule your interview, sometimes up to a year, you probably don't remember what you filled out. Therefore, it's important to print out a copy of your application and spend some time to be familiar with the questions and review all of your answers. Some of you might have had an organization, relative, or lawyer help you fill out the application. This does not excuse you from not knowing the answers because you are the applicant. Take note of any mistakes you have on the application or any changes you want to make. In addition, make a list of the things that have changed after you submitted your application, such as change of marital status, new international trips, change of address, a newborn, or traffic tickets. Let the officer know that you need to update some of the answers and make sure to bring any supporting documents. And don't forget, as a green card holder, you will have to fill out the AR-11 form every time you move. You can do that online, and I'll add the link in the description. Number seven, study, study, study. In addition to confirming your application is accurate and up to date, the officer will also test you for your ability to speak and understand English, your ability to read and write English, and your knowledge of US history and government. Failing any part of this will result in a second interview. And if you fail the second interview, your application will be denied and you have to resubmit your application and pay for it again. You definitely don't wanna do that. During the interview, the officer might have some casual conversations with you, such as asking you about the weather or traffic or what you did over the weekend. These questions may seem unrelated to the interview. However, they are actually testing your understanding of English your responses also show you how well you speak English. A small percentage of officers might also ask you about the definition of some of the words on the N-400 form during the interview to ensure you fully understand what you filled out. I've seen over and over again applicants fail the interview for not being able to provide the definitions. So be prepared and have a basic understanding of the words on the N-400 application. If you need help, I've made a few videos to help you and you can check them out here. Number nine, be truthful. Remember, you will be under oath during the U.S. citizenship interview. USCIS has done a background check on you and has all of the information about you. Sometimes they ask questions to see if you're going to tell the truth. Don't try to withhold information or lie because you think the truth might compromise your chances of getting U.S. citizenship. If you don't know the answer to a question, don't make up the answer. Just plainly say that you don't know the answer. If you lie during your interview, you will be denied citizenship and USCIS can even take away your citizenship if they find out later that you lied during the application process. Number 10, be respectful to the officer. Some officers might be stricter and less friendly than others. Don't be intimidated. The officers are not there to prevent you from becoming a US citizen. They are doing their jobs to ensure all applications are legitimate. Think of it as a job interview. 
Don't be rude to the officer, even if you disagree with his or her assessment. Stick to the facts and treat the officer with respect. And if you don't think you were treated fairly during the interview, you can always request to speak to the supervisor afterward. Last but not least, enjoy the process. This is a big moment in your life. Don't let the stress ruin it. Good luck to you during your interview and let me know when you pass. Hopefully I'll hear from you soon. Bye.